Stagnation is the worst thing that can happen to a creative. After all, if you aren't changing what you're doing on a regular basis, eventually you'll settle into your habits and get stale. And stale, leftover, flavorless, and cold is exactly what Gachi Akita has been for like 20 chapters now. When I first started this manga, I legitimately thought that it would go in a unique direction. Kei Urana was next up, having worked on Fire Force as an assistant, and Hideyoshi's graffiti art is always a standout. I'm a sucker for isekai-esque stories, wastelands, and Naughty's era abyss anime, so Gachi Akuda seemed right up my alley. Even the early coverage from other creators and commentators cross-platformed deemed this manga to be something very special. Imagine, you bag this sweetie. A real baddie. But her head game is trash. I'm talking D-tier AliExpress quality. That's enough to put anyone off, right? Connectivity and reciprocation are important dynamics when it comes to building a long-term relationship. Since I started Gachi, I've never fully enjoyed myself. It hasn't progressed with the art, the writing, the tonality, or pacing. As mentioned in previous gachi vids, the many flaws in the manga, all of them easily patchable, continue to widen, festering into an unrecoverable wound worthy of amputation. At this point, I doubt Yurana is going to be able to develop a sense of connectivity or reciprocation towards her readers. Not with this series, at least. The Vandals and Cleaners have finally met up, leading to the first major organizational skirmish of the series. Rudel is, of course, fighting Zoldil, Jabber is poning Ringle Star, and Anorexic Ginger is fighting Lightning Mommy. This isn't a bit, by the way. I legitimately don't know nor care to know the names of many of the characters here. And Yurana isn't doing a good job of making these battles stand out from one another. The POV constantly switches around, which is fine, that's common for Shonen. But when all the battles are progressing at the same pace, it adds confusion to what's happening and fails to establish the stakes of each conflict. While I know they're fighting within a cave dimension thing, whatever, Yorana couldn't illustrate some of these caverns differently. This is one of her biggest flaws as an author that has yet to be addressed. Her backgrounds and locations all feel the same. There's no vibrancy or distinctiveness to add to the flavor of the battle. Chapter 53 is one of the worst manga installments that I've ever read from any series. And look, I know that is an extremely harsh thing to say, but again, this isn't a bit. Chapter 53 of Gachi Akuda should be used as an example of what not to do with a weekly shonen. The first four pages were great. I really like some of the members of the cleaners, Simiyu especially. But then, Yorana never returns to them, instead focusing on Team Baby and the Jabber fight for the rest of the chapter. These segments are so underwhelming that I can't help but wonder... Why she didn't just scrap those first few pages and focus on the other battles? <laughs> and fuck, the artwork was in dire straits here. I'm talking three quarters of a page taken up by shadows and speech bubbles. Simple artwork and nothing more. Yorana understands human anatomy well, and I really enjoy her character designs. She's very good at character designs. But static and dynamic posing can only be used so much before things get stale. Anyway, the battles go on, and they're all very silly and forgettable. After an oddly placed but well-written flashback, which I thought showed off Yorana's capabilities of drawing traditional shonen settings, we get thrown into the Gunchan arc. Ryo having a gun is not a surprise. I don't see why it's presented as such a shocking deconstruction. Earlier on, we had an armada of bandits try to drape up the organization place, right? Didn't they have, like, a lot of weapons and military-grade vehicles? In fact, don't we see many of these characters have vehicles that would need to have some form of infrastructure in order to maintenance them and... 
obviously there has to be some form of fuel, right? In, in fact, there's even like franchise food in the abyss. So this is what I mean. If there are so many things already available to the people of the abyss, how come there's always this big shocking reveal whenever anything happens around real or rudal? Why wouldn't you expect your enemy to have a gun? And why would only a hitman have a gun when we've seen other characters who weren't deemed to be hitmen also have firearms? But what really grinds my gears about this reveal is that when Ryo guns down Jabber, her line, I don't think you're actually dead, felt so deflating. If you're going to give your character a seemingly broken weapon and establish that they're hiding a deadly secret about themselves and their capabilities, why, why, why would you immediately plant seeds of doubt into the reader's mind about the effectiveness of this new ability. I am hoping, praying that Yorana has something up her sleeve with the trash dragon accelerating to the heavens. I'm not a fan of negative tropes like aborted arcs or interrupted battles in manga, but this sudden shift in direction feels like editorial interference. Maybe this is a good thing. Whatever happens from here on out, I won't really be surprised. 70 chapters of below mediocrity can't be salvaged by an exceptional execution into a new arc. It hasn't been done in manga before, and I don't think Key is going to be the first person to do it. I'm still not going to recommend Gachi Akuta. The art can be amazing at times. The writing and unraveling of a multi-layered mystery often shows promise, but the tonal whiplash in every single chapter wears the reader out and none of the grand ideas have been executed effectively yet. I don't feel satisfied. There has been very little payoff and all this flirting and teasing of what's to come has worn out its welcome. Get to the good stuff, Yorana. Show us what you got. We know you can write a better series than this. We know you can draw more interesting art than this. So do it. I should be seeing Gachi Akuta panels trending on r slash manga and Twitter. I want to see Gachi memes on anime IG. I want to see a proliferation of TikToks and shorts with Gachi content. Creators hyped this work in the beginning because of aesthetic and premise. Now, I want to see video essays where the writing and plot twists are studied. Until then though, Gachi Akita is trash. 3 out of 10.